Noam Chomsky weighed in on Bernie Sanders' campaign, um, and he made some interesting comments. Let's take a look. Uh, it's common to say now that the Sanders campaign failed. I think that's a mistake. I think it was an extraordinary success. Completely shifted the uh, arena of debate and discussion. Uh, issues that were unthinkable uh, a couple of years ago are now right in the middle of attention. Uh, the, uh, the, the worst crime he committed in the eyes of the establishment is not the policies proposing. It's the fact that he was able to uh, inspire popular movements, which had already been developing, uh, Occupy, Black Lives Matter, or many others, and turn them into an activist movement, which doesn't just show up every couple of years to push a lever and then go home, but applies constant pressure, constant activism, and so on. That could affect a Biden administration. Bernie was successful in that he just created at least a new, uh, a million new Bernie Sanders. That's how Bernie Sanders was successful, is that he let people know that it is possible to be involved in the system and still hold on to your values and your principles. So he awakened a lot of people, and for that we owe him a debt of gratitude. But I would argue that's as far as his successes go. That's it. <laughs> it doesn't go beyond that. Why? Because he didn't win. You could make the case that in 2016, that maybe that wasn't the ultimate goal. Um, that, you know, he could win without winning in 2016. I don't think you can make that case this time. I think that winning is winning. I do. And I think that, I think that winning had to be winning the White House, not just the primary. Now, I always said that the primary is going to be harder for Bernie to get through than the general, but you wouldn't have heard me call what Bernie's doing a, a success full stop until, unless and until he's in the White House, because I'm not, I'm not in the business of moral victories, and maybe this sets me apart from other people on the left, but to some extent, some people on the left are comfortable being a subculture and a subgroup. I'm not. I'm interested in winning. I'm interested in governing. And that doesn't mean you sell, you know, you sell out your principles to get there. Quite the opposite. You have to hold your principles and get elected. That's the chess game. That's what's difficult to figure out. That's where you got to get all the pieces, all the moving pieces in the right place. And you're walking a tightrope. It's difficult, but that's what we're in this for. And I want people on the left to, to get to the point where we're all on the same page and we all agree. No, the ultimate goal is winning. And then, by the way, let me go a step further. The ultimate goal actually isn't just winning. The ultimate goal is to get these policies implemented. So, I'm willing to give Bernie credit in that he's successful in waking up a million or more new Bernie Sanders out there. There are young men and women who will be the next Bernie Sanders and could get elected and could be principled. And we have like a whole new... You know, Generation Z and the Millennial Generation, and even many in Generation X. This is, it's like a very social democratic leaning generation because of everything that's happened politically. We have a lot more in common with FDR's politics than Bill Clinton's politics. Um, so, in that, he's successful. In shifting the realm of debate and discussion, he's successful. But in getting power, it's quite the opposite. And I would argue, as I've done almost every segment this show, that um, he's really squandering his movement's power at the moment and the leverage that he has. I think you're kidding yourself if you think with the 30% chunk of the Democratic primary base, you're kidding yourself if you think he doesn't have leverage. He absolutely could put 10 executive orders on Biden's desk and say, all these in the first 100 days or I'm out, or good luck in November, I'm not going to help you. And Biden would really have no choice. Biden would either say, okay, or he'd say, listen, man, here are the five I could do. I can't do these other five. And then you take the deal. Okay, cool. Great. Those five executive orders. Let's shake on it. Let me get your name in writing. 
Now you got my uh, full support. And by the way, if they were to do that, I guarantee you, I guarantee you it would only be like single digits of Bernie supporters who don't um, vote for Biden and help Biden. So maybe like 6% of Bernie supporters would be like, I'm out. But if he were to get really awesome executive orders, a guarantee from him, then, you know, I think now it'll probably be more like 15 or 20% of Bernie supporters who are not going to support Biden. Maybe even a little more, maybe 25%. So, um, Bernie, while he's great at the movement angle of politics, and while he's great at messaging and inspiring, um, we got to keep it real in that he really could have won this election, and he didn't. And so I think he's very bad at making adjustments on the fly. Um, and honestly, I think he's a little soft. <laughs> I do. He wasn't willing to say the things he needed to say or do the things he needed to do. When his boot was on Biden's neck, he took it off. Whereas he could have pressed down harder. And that's what I was pushing for him to do. That's what many people were pushing for him to do. Um, he could have made the electability argument and said, no, Biden can't win. Instead, he was telling everybody Biden can win. Um, I would have compared him to Hillary Clinton. I would have not disciplined my own surrogates like Zephyr Teachout when she correctly said Biden is corrupt. David Schroeder, same thing. Biden's corrupt. And, and Bernie went out there and apologized to Biden, even though Biden's corrupt. So listen, Bernie is soft. And he also genuinely likes Joe Biden in a way he didn't like Hillary Clinton. Um, and so he wasn't able to do the things that he needed to do to win. And in the process, he let down his own supporters. Um, but the, the successes you can say he had are creating more versions of him, which is definitely good and it's nothing to scoff at. But I think you're kind of deluding yourself if, if you're comfortable with just that. Because no, this time, in my mind, we were playing a win, man. And the fact that we didn't, I'm not going to come out here and tell you guys it's all peaches, it's all rosy, it's all dandy, it's all, you know, like this was the goal. No. <laughs> the goal was to win. And he didn't do that. And we have to be honest about those shortcomings in order to adjust moving forward.